Can you talk a little bit about some of the interrogation tactics and psychological tricks that you would use during sure. interrogation and some of these quote unquote games that you could play with people to crack cases? Yeah. I mean, my most powerful tool was something I learned probably, oh God, it had to be in my childhood. And, you know, I remember my dad kind of talking and he would say, hey, the best thing you could do is let people talk and they'll tell you everything you want to hear. And he, he used to have this technique, two techniques. Minimization is, is really powerful, but we'll talk about that. But mirroring is one of the most powerful techniques you could use. So in other words, where you're sitting right now, if I was interrogating you mm -hmm. subconsciously, you know, you're not understanding, but I'm going to put my hands like you have. them, And we're going to start to relate. And it's weird. And the, the, the way I figured out, my dad, one time he showed the example, and it was amazing. So we pulled the top of the street. We, we, I grew up in the Valesburg section in Newark, New Jersey. So mm -hmm. primarily an Italian section, um, great spot, uh, very busy, long streets. At the top of the street was the main road that we would have to pull out onto every day when he drove me and my brother to school. And so we would pull to the top and, you know, there was no traffic light. Um, it was busy and nobody would let you out, you know, nobody at all. And there was a port at one point there was cars stop. One car was going to actually go, you know, make a right on the street. The other car was going to go straight and they kind of stopped for each other for a second. Mm -hmm. And the passenger in the car that was kind of slowing down where we need it to get across had, it was the wife of the guy had her arm out the, the open window. So my dad quickly opened his window and put his arm out and he said, watch this. And the woman looked and she just went to her husband, stop. And they, they waved us to go. And he said, that is mirroring. That's what you do. You just mirror what people do and they will go ahead and give you the benefit of the doubt. So I took that into interrogation, never having really learned true interrogation from my dad, but I would take the mirroring effect into interrogation. And I would begin the process of talking to anyone with just a silent period and just kind of mimic, not to mock, but just mimic what they were doing, kind of mm -hmm. ape them for lack of better terms. So if they were doing, you know, if they were leaning back in their chair, I just lean back in my chair, you know, whatever, if they were like, you know, I would do that over the course of time. Then usually it would, you know, Hey, um, what are, you know, what are we here for? I just be like, what are we here for? <laughs> Whatever. And and invariably you would get a you would get a bond. It's a weird dynamic. Subconscious. It's a weird dynamic. And then that kind of causes some discussion to start, which then gives you the ability to kind of work in the minimization technique. Now, there's all other things that people talk about, torture techniques and different things along the way. And there's times and places, and I'm not gonna lie to you that that some of that stuff needs to be utilized in right. order to get information quicker, in order to get information that's necessary. Um, but I'm not talking about, you know, everyday techniques. The minimization piece is incredible. And I'll explain it to like this. Um, let's say there's a, uh, a, you know, a child molester or a child rapist or something that you have to talk to. Disgusting. The worst crime you could possibly think about, right? The goal is to not embarrass and make that person feel you know, take them off their, their pedestal. Cause they come in like they're on a pedestal. Like, yeah, I could do this. Fuck you. You know, I'm not going to tell you about it. The worst thing you can do is, is, is kind of jump them and judge them in their head. Now you want to kill them is what you want to do, but you're basically not going to judge them because it's not going to get the open communication going. So you're mirroring a little bit, you're talking, and then you kind of can throw something in like, Hey, you, you might have a picture of the little girl, or you might have a picture of the little boy. And you, you might want to just like look at it and say, eh, I don't know if I can, control myself either you know under your breath something along mm. those lines and then you kind of see like you know now this is tv would make it look like it's 30 seconds this can be over the course of a couple hours but you're kind of wearing each other down they're trying to wear you down you're going to fight the fight you're going to mm -hmm. stay in it because it has to be done um and at the end of it you know you're basically hey man i don't i don't blame you i don't blame you i mean little girl walking around dressed like that i don't know i'd be honest with you i don't know if i can control myself either you want to you know Mm. Not easy to do, but you're kind of minimizing that activity mm. with with a public official. Same thing, like, hey, you didn't know, dude. You didn't know. I mean, you didn't know. You took, you bartered the, you bartered the utilities authority. Your daughter needed new windows in the house. You know, you told the guy, hey, man, you know, if you put windows in my daughter's house for nothing, I'll give you the contract at utilities authority. I love my kids too. I would have done the same thing. 
You know, I mean, yeah. what was I going to do? I mean, yeah, I can't afford one new windows. I'm a fucking FBI agent. Right. How am I going to afford that? Yeah, of course I got to do that. And I was all right. That's all you need. That's all you need is the opening there mm. right now. On the terrorist side of the house, it's a different story. You know, because overseas, true criminal masterminds, and I've dealt with a couple of serial bank robbers, you know, people who even on this side, but mostly the stuff I did, you know, in and around the world to kind of discover information or to get explanations or to develop areas that we needed to create as an objective, both in the military and in the Bureau, had to be focused, it had to be violent, and it had to be on point. And their belief system is different. They have no problem dying for their cause. Right. Right. So you have to understand that. And basically you have to work it through a system that kind of deals or kind of places violence with violence. Right. You can only. They don't understand anything else. You can only respond to that kind of violence with the same kind of violence. They don't care about their family like we do. <clears throat> the biggest, you know, if, if you're. If I'm going after somebody and I threaten your kids in this country, you got a problem. You know what I mean? That's it. They're never going to give you what you need to have. They're going to, you know, they're right. going to do it. Hey, or bringing like even that guy I was telling you about, like, hey, I want to put your daughter on the stand and she's going to talk about how she got free windows for this. And you almost have him. And then he went to trial and he took, put his daughter on the stand and she lied on the stand. She got charged. And I just said, told you, told you, you idiot. Told you. I gave you an opportunity. Right. So, but. In the other world of, you know, savage terrorists, savage killers, they could give a shit less about anything but their cause. Mm -hmm. They're happy to die for it. They're happy to die for it. You know, like Patton once said, the so object. What do you do? How do you how do you deal with them psychologically? If they don't long, give a shit about anything except long, for God. Long process. It's just a trying to bond with that type of person is the hardest thing you'll ever have to do. Trying to find a commonality. My it, belief in something. It, you know? The only thing I could see is literally the worst torture, like playing the Barney song on the loudest volume for <laughs> 10 days straight or a week straight. Like how else? I don't know. Restricted, restricted personal space is powerful. Powerful. Think about it. You ever have an MRI? You ever lay in an MRI tube for I think 20 so. minutes? I think I have, yeah. You start thinking about it. You start, like, if you're laying in that tube and you start going, holy shit, this thing's only like two inches from my nose. Oh, my God. I can't move my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Holy God. You start thinking about it, it'll get you. Mm -hmm. I've had it happen. Like, the little, holy crap, I got to get out of this, right? You take a box that's four by four feet by four feet or four feet by, to start, and then make it four feet by three feet and just keep restricting that body space. It's going to go. Mm -hmm. Blasting a little bit of music, throwing a little water in the box, <clears throat> you know, making it cold and uncomfortable and unpleasant. You're going to actually get a conversation going based on that. Mm -hmm. And once you have, once you get to the point where it's, what do you need from me? What What's going to make this stuff? What do you need from me? You you got it. At that point, you got it. Right. Once you're telling me, once you're putting me in control, and saying, you know, what do you need from me? Now, it might go another three weeks. Right. But I know I got you. You got to be patient. I know I got you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm going to wear it out and I'm going to find stuff. Plus, we also know, we know things that they don't think we know. That whole thing about um, deepest, darkest secret. If I knew your deepest, darkest secret, you're going to fucking tell me what I need to know. Guaranteed. Hmm. Guaranteed. Because I'm going to expose it to your, you know, your spiritual leader. Mm. or I'm going to expose it to somebody that's important to you. Now I have to know who's important to you. You know, for most of us, it would be family, right? If, if my dad knew X or if my wife knew Y or my kids knew this, not the case. Mm -hmm. the case is, does my spiritual mentor and leader know? Right. Does this take me out of the opportunity to be something bigger in the afterlife, mm -hmm. which is all the shit that, you know, cause of, of a lot of that stuff.